I welcome you again to this our electronic church. I just bless the name of the Lord for his goodness and love. Thank you for those of you by the grace of God that have been privileged to hear the messages that we bring. I appreciate also your input. Thank you for your calls, your email. And um, this is a sign that God has blessed you through these messages. And today is another opportunity to share in this electronic church. I am your brother, Chidi Okorafu. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, we glorify your name for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for this man and woman. I do not know how he got this death. But Lord, I pray that you might minister unto my hearers today to the glory of your holy name. Have your way, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Turn with me to the book of Psalm 107, verses 15 and 16. Psalm 107, 15 and 16. Oh, that men will give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in two. For he has broken the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in two. I want to also go to Gospel Luke. Luke Gospel, chapter 17. Luke is in the New Testament. Turn with me to Luke, chapter 17. I'm reading 17 and 18. Luke 17, 17, and 18. So Jesus answered and said, Where are there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? 18. Where are there not any found who return to give glory to God, except this foreigner? I want to share a message with you today on two marvelous simple sentences. Two marvelous, simple sentences. It is interesting that you listen to this. I know if you are acquainted with the rudiments of grammar, you realize that there are kinds of sentences. We have the simple sentence, the um, complex sentence, the compound sentence, and others. Today I'm talking about two simple sentences. Not just two simple Two marvelous, simple sentences. They are very simple, but very marvelous. Why do I say they are marvelous? They are so miraculous. They are two simple, miraculous uh, sentences. Uh, of course, I, I, if you look at it very well, these two simple sentences can quench fire. Two. Very simple, but they can quench fire. And so I call on everybody to gather around and hear this message today. Let families hear it. Let corporate bodies hear it. Let church hear it. Very, very important. I'm talking about two simple sentences that can quench fire. Two simple sentences that can stop war. If these two simple sentences are present, war will stop. Nobody will get into war. When these two sentences are used. These two simple sentences can stop grievances. They can stop grievances. I mean, these two simple sentences can heal broken homes. Two simple sentences. It's so medicinal. Okay, let me call it two medicinal simple sentences. Two medicinal Two medicine is, is a great medicine. And that's why we are, we are giving this medicine free of charge today. It is two simple sentences that can settle disputes. 
Two simple sentences. They can even lubricate forgiveness. Two simple sentences that can fan the embers of love. They can increase love. They can make the love come to their zenith. You know, two simple sentences. They can quicken promotion. Do you know these two simple sentences can make them give you extra promotion in the office? That's why you need to hear what I'm talking about. It can endear you in the heart of your husband. It can endear you in the heart of your boss. Two simple sentences. I don't know. You want to know the two simple sentences? These two simple sentences are not expensive. But they are very scarce. Two simple. You want to know them? Now, you don't need to import these sentences. Ah. Mr. Preacher, now hear me. These two simple sentences, you don't need to be rich to use them. You don't even need to go to school to use the two simple, marvelous sentences. Whether you went to school or you didn't go to school, educated or uneducated, literate or illiterate, it does not matter. Two simple sentences. Whether you are downtrodden, you can use the two simple sentences. Now, these two simple are so great. It can, it can unify, it can unite somebody. Two simple sentences. The two simple sentences can bring a man and a woman that are divorced. It can bring them back. Two simple sentences. You want to know the two simple sentences? If you want to know it, can you raise your hand? You want to know the two simple, marvelous, simple sentences? Now look at it. The two simple sentences are number one, I am very sorry. Number two, thank you. They look simple, but they are very powerful. I am very sorry. I am very sorry. Now, let me draw you to the scriptures. In Luke Gospel, chapter 15, there is this young man, the demon of squandermania came upon him. And he said to his father, give me my own share. I want to go and, 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 and squander it. The father gave him his own share. He went and squandered the money in prodigal living. So that everything finished. I refer you to one of my tapes. Restoration. Total restoration. I explained so much from that far. But I just want to pick something from here. It came to pass when this young man so squandered the thing that the whole thing finished. He became reduced. And he started eating pig's food. Pig. Pig's food. He started eating. You know, sin and iniquity can reduce a man. They can reduce a man. Sin can make a secretary in an office to slap a director general. And the director general will respond by laughing. Saying, hey, this one, you they slap me like this. What did I do you? Because he has lost the glory of integrity at a particular juncture. And so, but sin can make a wealthy man to sleep in the gutter as a result of drunkenness. Sin. But look at the bottom line. If you read Luke Gospel, chapter 15, verse 17, the Bible says, when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your higher servants. And he arose and came to his father. Look at my description of this passage. When he was lost, he said to himself, I will arise and go to my father and tell my father, I am very sorry. That's the conclusion of the matter. And he arose, he went to his father, and he said, I'm sorry. Look at what I am sorry brought to this young man. As he was going, when the father saw him from afar, he rushed. He gave him a hug. He said, bring a ring. That was not, bring the best robe. That was not okay. Bring sandals. He got a ring. He got sandals. He got best robe. Why? Simple thing. I am sorry. You know, I am sorry. People will not go to hell because they committed sin. But they'll go to hell because you committed sin, you saw opportunity, 
you hardened your heart, you refuse to come back to God and say, I am sorry. That's why people will be destroyed. They committed atrocity, abomination. They were so terrible. But they saw opportunity in Jesus. They saw opportunity to reconcile. Instead of going back to reconcile, they hardened their heart and they refused to say, I am sorry. Do you know why you are dying? Because you refuse to go back to God to say, I'm sorry. That is the same thing that happens today. Do you know there are people who offend somebody? But they find it difficult to approach the person to say, I am sorry. They find it difficult. They, they offend institution. They offend the church. Offend the college. Offend the government. Simply to own up and say, I'm sorry for what I have done. Pride will not let them. Pride will not let you own up. Pride will not let you apologize. And that is even why some men and women, they have shattered their family because they offended. Just to open your mouth and say, honey, I'm sorry. Honey, I'm sorry. Darling, I'm sorry. Baby, I'm sorry. These are days when people call baby. And other things that they call. You say, I am sorry. Simple sentence. I am sorry. That is what has lingered the quarrel to you now. That's why you see a woman packing her things out of the house because of failure to say, I am sorry. That's why you see somebody going to court. Because Let me talk to you. Now, uh, listen to me. When you say, I am sorry, it takes a genius devil to continue with the matter. When you open your mouth sincerely, transparently say, I am sorry, it takes a genius uncle to the devil to continue with the matter. I want to ask you a question. Can a father say, I'm sorry to a son? Can a father call the son and say, I am sorry? What stops it? Can a husband say, I'm sorry to a wife? I'm a man. How can I say, I'm sorry? How can I say, I'm sorry? When you know you are the person that has offended, if you stay in your bedroom and tell your wife, I am sorry, and it will make you live in peace, then why are you priding about? There are people, husbands, that will offend their wife. Instead of going straight, they will, they will begin to go around and around and around and around and around. No, all those logics, all go around and around is not what the woman is waiting for. Just say, honey, I am sorry. Now hear me. To buy flour and put on the bed will not take the place of I am sorry. It doesn't take it. If you like, buy this and buy the other one. That's not what we are talking about. Use the simple sentence. I am sorry. I made a mistake. I am sorry. I use a wrong word. I am sorry. Marvelous, simple sentence. And it will get the job done. You have your peace. The home will be restored. What is in that your head? Why pride pulling you here and there? Can a pastor say I'm sorry to a member? Yes now. Why not? Why not? In the midst of all the things... Pastor can say, I'm sorry to member. Let me even ask. Is there any pastor? That, uh, are there pastor that do things that member don't like? The answer is yes. The answer again is yes. The answer again is yes. The answer again is yes. Are there members that do things that pastor don't like? The answer is a capital yes. Capital yes. Yes, 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 and yes. But life is filled with offenses and forgiveness. When I join people in marriage, I tell them, if you want this marriage to work, go home and buy a fairly sized cemetery. Go and buy fairly sized cemetery. Cemetery has not lost its meaning. Cemetery is where the dead is buried. If you want relationship, your married relationship to work, go and buy fairly sized cemetery. Where you bury the offenses of each other. There's no perfect man. There's no man without weakness. There's no woman without weakness. He came to your house with a barrel of with, with, with weaknesses. With weaknesses. Life is filled with offenses and forgiveness. If you don't want to be offended, don't get married. If you don't want to be offended, don't get married. Are you hearing me right now? If you don't want to be offended, don't get married. I dare hear that. You are hearing me in case you have not married. Now listen to me. If you don't want to be offended, don't touch marriage at all. Because for you to say, I will marry you, you are, you are agreeing to be offended. But if that marriage will work, 
Instead of buying black book where you record your faces of your partner, go and buy a fairly sized cemetery where you bury the offenses of somebody. Yes. A leader can say, I am sorry to the lead. Nothing stops government from apologizing to the people they are leading if they make mistakes. They are not, they are not, they are not perfect. They are not beyond mistakes. A leader can say, I'm sorry we made this mistake. A pastor can even stand in the church. Let me give an example. If, if pastor has met something, done something, made a mistake, bad announcement, and every member is already carrying stone, and he comes to the church on Sunday and says, my brethren, if you throw this stone on me now, you're right. I'm not worthy to pick this microphone, but I'm apologizing. Can you find a space in your heart and forgive me? I promise I won't do that again. It would take a junior devil to continue with the matter. Because you have sincerely apologized. So, why is it? Why is it difficult? Why I ask that man or woman by your side, why are you stingy with I am sorry? Why are you very stingy with I'm sorry? Why are you very stingy? Why is it difficult for you to say I am sorry? Very, very difficult. Can a manager say I'm sorry to a gate man? Yes. If the manager fails the gate man, even though you employ the man, nothing stops you from saying, I'm sorry, I've, I've done this. It doesn't remove your, your being a leader. I am sorry. It's very, very important for you to say, I am sorry. In case you're here today, you can rise up, you can tell, it's very marvelous. I'm sorry for what I have done. Why are you delaying the sorry? Why are you delaying it? Say it out now. You're going round and round. You are delayed. You are escalating the issue. Come on, go and apologize. Even if you need to kneel down, kneel down and apologize. When you apologize, you have, you have played your role. You have rolled away the burden. The, the burden is no more on you now. It is now on the person that you have apologized to. Have they sacked to you? Did you make any mistake? Is there something you did that is wrong? Can you apologize? Will it cost you something to wake him up in the night? If you need to add kneeling down, can you kneel down and say, I'm sorry? I am sorry. I am very, very sorry. Yes. There are two marvelous sentences. And if you say that, you see what's going to happen. Because you're able to say, I'm sorry. Now, let me get back to the other simple sentence. And before I do that, what I'm teaching today has is both horizontal and vertical horizontal has to do with man to man vertical has to do with god to man you must say i'm sorry to god as man for forgiveness for what you did but you cannot offend the man and you have not said i'm sorry to a man and you are going you are busy telling god i'm sorry tell the man that you have offended Tell the institution that you have offended that you are very sorry for what you have done. And so, don't, it will be very, very terrible for you to die because you refuse to say I'm sorry. For that thing to be denied you because you refuse to say I am sorry. Now let me go to the other one. Simple. Thank you. Thank you. The the evil man says, "Ekeleonya kede, agwatozo." He makes you ekeleonya kede. Onya kede agwatozo. Akede is this? Uh, do I call it native beans or something like that? And there are people in those days who used to prepare porridge, native uh, beans. It used to be very delicious, sumptuous, and so. I know people carry it, they sell it. When you treat that Akedi person, appreciate the person fine, he will prepare another one. God has done so great things to us. I, I, will, I, will, I will soon tell you. But do you know there are people, they have eyes to criticize, but they don't have eyes to say thank you. They can't thank. Not at all. Some can only condemn, criticize, and find fault, but they cannot say thank you. They can only criticize 
after eating the delicacies why can't a man say I'm, I'm, I oh my wife thank you this food is very delicious especially when the food is very delicious he said thank you there are people who have local government appetite state appetite national appetite international appetite for those of you who you have national or international appetite the woman will struggle do everything to fit into your appetite cook all sorts of dishes for you and after eating you behave as if you didn't see anything but the worst is that there are people they will never say thank you when the food is okay it's only when it is over salted over peppered that's why they will talk ungrateful generation ungrateful generation the bible said it shall come to pass in the book of second timothy chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 that men shall be ungrateful we have ungrateful people who find it difficult to say thank you after caring for you you can open your mouth to say thank you instead of appreciating to say thank you you reward the person i mean you give back the person stubbornness you give back the person wickedness after caring for you have you not seen people that somebody took care of while they were sick while they were in the hospital when they got at work when they when, when they became healed they, 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 what they will appreciate they will not appreciate the person instead they will unleash wickedness on the person after dressing your house you can't say thank you after helping you you find it difficult to say thank you after paying your school fees even if you're a child even if they are your parents why can't you drop and say papa mama mom thank you for the school fees thank you for what you're doing papa I, I want to make you proud it is important why can't you appreciate a good pastor if you're privileged to hear a beautiful message why can you not say thank you thank you for this message thank you for what you have done in my life why are you stingy with thank you thank you why can't you even tell your wife thank you after the bedroom acrobatics after a powerful bedroom acrobatics why not say oh honey thank you this is special why can't you after a powerful message by your pastor he's a man of god thank you for that message it was a blessing to my heart why not say thank you do you know what it means as you listen to this message now do you know what it means when you pick your microphone and and, and call i mean pick your telephone and call me or send me an email to say man of god that message was a blessing to my soul thank you it it inspires the man of god more why can't people say thank you people cannot say thank you because of ungrateful spirit they can't say thank you in case you do not know do you know uh, that's why if you get back to psalm 103 psalm 103 yes I, I told you earlier that this message is both horizontal and vertical i've just told you the need for you to tell somebody a fellow human being who has done so much so well who has done something good unto you who delivered you it will not be good for you not to open your mouth to say thank you in appreciation of what the man or the woman has made but let's, 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 let's get back to God let's get back to God Psalm 103 from verse 1 bless the Lord oh my soul all that is within me bless his holy name bless the Lord oh my soul and forget not all his benefits you know no wonder the, the, the singer says, Count your blessing, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings. Sit down where you are. Count your blessings. I, I, I will help you. Do you know that we are too fast to forget? Too fast to get angry with ourselves. Too quick to conclude. We behave as if there is no tomorrow. I want to ask you a question. Something that will help you know. Because it says, bless the Lord, oh my soul, forget not his benefits. 
that the Lord has been so gracious unto you. Who is the most wounded person in this earth? Who is the most, you know, wretched person? Are you? Who is the most pitiable person? Who is the most, you know, unfavored person? Who is the poorest person? Who is the most sick person? Look at you, standing up. There are people who have been bedridden for years. There are people. There are people in coma for some months. But look at you. Upon everything you are breathing. This is an ungrateful generation. You have evidences of his blessing. Look at salvation grace. Where are your roommates in iniquity? Some of them are dead. Where are your fellow arm robbers? Some of them are dead, but you are breathing, enjoying the grace of God today. Where are your fellow witches? They are no more alive. Where are your roommates in prostitution? Some of them died and perished. But look at you. God saved you, preserved you, and kept you now. Why can't you thank God and appreciate him? Why can't you not open your mouth? Do thanksgiving unto the Lord for what he has done. What shall I do unto the Lord? All I have to say, thank you, Lord. What shall I render unto the Lord? All I have to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All I have to say, thank you, Lord. Look at the grace gifts that God gave to you. Not by your holiness, not by your fasting and prayer, but by the grace of God. You are not occupying your current position by merit. Because God does not care about age. He blessed Abraham. He gave him an old age child. God does not care about experience. He chose David. He does not care about gender. He chose, uh, uh, he chose Esther. He does not care about your past. Look at Paul. Look at Peter. He does not care about your physical appearance. Look at Zacchaeus. He raised Zacchaeus. He does not care about fluency. He raised Moses. God never saw a person he will not help. He never saw a prayer he will not answer. He never saw a person he will not love. He never saw a sinner he will not forgive. He's so good unto you. Oh Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh Lord, you are excellent in my life every day. Oh Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh Lord, you are excellent in my life. Now, why will you? He said, bless the Lord. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count them. I said earlier, your health and your healing. You are still better. You have not been bedridden yet. I said you are better than many people. I don't care the state. I don't know what the doctor diagnosed. But I tell you, you are better than many people. Your health is better than many people. You can still stand up in the morning. I know you have pains, but you are still walking. You are still eating. There are people that cannot eat except through the pipe. There are people who are on oxygen. But look at you. The grace of God has been surrounding you. So, why can't you say thank you to God? Do you know what it means to be in persistent pain for five hours? To be in pain. But look at your life. Look at your life. You know, I was just sharing certain things that will make you know that God is faithful unto you. How, do you have a car that has reached up to 30 years and the engine is still working? Do you have a car that has, is up to 50 years, but the engine is still working? Oh, my brother, my sister, why are you ungrateful? There is a particular engine. This engine has stayed for 30 years, 50 years, 60, 70. No part of the engine has been changed. Yet yeah, the engine is working every second. That engine is your heart, crafted by Trinity. Every second. Every second. Malaria will come, he refused to stop. Typhoid will come, he refused to stop. All kinds of sicknesses came, your heart is still beating. Can you raise your hand and say, thank you, Jesus? You owe it as a duty. Why are you stingy with thank you? Why are you stingy? Why are you stingy? Do I talk about sleep? 
You don't even know that sleep is a blessing. There are people that cannot sleep except with the aid of drugs, tablets, before they could sleep. But look at you. You sleep. You sleep in the market. You sleep in the church. You sleep even in the car. You enter the car, enter the plane. You've already slept. Oh, what a blessing. What a blessing that you can sleep. That's why I tell people, don't be angry that your partner snores. If sleep is a blessing, snoring is extra blessing. Don't be angry with your partner. You know, this marriage, sometimes people get into marriage, and when you get into marriage, you didn't know, you didn't test it before. When you were single, you never wanted anything snoring, even in your house. You dare not sleep with somebody in the same house when it's not. But you got married, you dragged somebody to the altar, or somebody dragged you to the altar. Committed yourself by saying, I do, that very Saturday night. To your greatest surprise, as you were sleeping, all of a surprise. You didn't know it was a machine gun that you married in the house. You never know it was a machine gun. Well, that's for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to dead to do you part. So don't be don't be angry. It's extra blessing. If sleep is blessing, snoring is extra blessing. I don't know. The mist is it what God has done? What the Lord has done for me? I cannot say it all. What the Lord has done for me? He has done great things. What do I say? Is it oxygen? Oxygen that God gave you. Go and ask people what it takes for them. Some people, they, they have, you know, okay, ask them in the hospital. How much does oxygen cost for one hour? If I will compute a theological arithmetic with you today, you will realize what I'm saying. I've, I was asking questions. Some people say one hour, oxy, one hour oxygen. Some say it can cost uh, 3,000. Others say it can cost um, maybe 5,000. I don't want to go for the expensive one. Let me go for 3,000. If it can go for 3,000, then count it. 3,000 for one hour. 24 hours will be 3,000 times 24. That's about 72,000 Naira per day. Multiply it by 365. Multiply it by 365. Yes. In fact, when I asked a question the other day, um, I... I I was ministering somewhere in the United States. I asked them a question. I think they talk about $200 or $400 per, per hour. And I said, multiply by 24. You see how much it is. Multiply it by 365 days in a year. 72,000 times 365. You see how much it amounts. Then you will now multiply it by the number of years you have spent on earth. If you have 50 years, multiply it. You see the millions and billions of Naira that you have as what I call oxygen scholarship by God. Oxygen scholarship. Why will you not thank God? Look at the favor of pregnancy and childbirth. Not by your holiness. Not at all. You see this God. I've seen people who were committed seven abortions seven abortions but they got married as they were marching to the altar they got pregnant they delivered twins by the time they went to the reception before the end of the marriage ceremony they are pregnant of triplets as they reach home they deliver triplets i'm just trying to paint a picture these are people who committed several abortions they got delivered but they got married and they are delivering children every day. And I've also seen people, I've seen people who were virgins before marriage, but no child coming. Whatever God has given you is simple grace. Not by mind. Look at the protection that God gives you. If you get back to that scripture, it says, Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Sickness that came upon others and they died came upon you and you survived it. The disease that eliminated many people 
came close to you and you survived it. What do I say? Who redeems your life from destruction? Can you remember the accident you had? The vehicle some assaulted? People were asking, do you mean that somebody survived this? Somebody survived this? Yes, you did. You survived that accident because of the grace of God. That's why what I'm talking about. Why should I be stingy? Why should you be stingy? Thanking God for what he has done. I, I want to tell you today before I round up this message. I said three, two marvelous, simple sentences. Thank you. And I am very sorry. How do you say it? You can write it. If you are ashamed of approaching the person, thank God for GSM. Put it in a test message. Please, sir, I am sorry. I'm sorry for what I have done. You can write it in a letter, put it in an envelope, post it under the pillow. I am sorry. I don't know how to say it. I have offended you. I am very sorry. When it becomes stingy in your mouth, you want quarrel, you want grievances to continue. Do it. Write it. Show it in your character. You can use a token. And you see what the Lord will do. Can you devote yourself? When you see people appreciating God, sometimes you see them. When you see a man drop his car key on the altar, it was not because he's mad. It's because he reasoned the goodness of God unto him. When you see somebody writing checks, bringing out checks, writing millions to appreciate God, to sponsor the work of God, it is because he got an experience of the goodness of God. He said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Everything that is within me, rise up and bless it. My soul, there's a song that says, Praise the Lord, my spirit, soul, and body. Praise the Lord, my spirit, soul, and body. Praise the Lord, my spirit, soul, and body. Shout, hallelujah. I pray that thanksgiving will never lack in your mouth. You wake up and it is good for you to wake up thanking God. Wake up in the morning with songs of praise. Don't wake up in the morning with trouble. Don't wake up in the morning quarreling with your husband or wife. Cursing your children. No. Wake up in the morning. I will enter his gaze with thanksgiving in my mouth. I will enter his gate with praise. I will say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. You know, there are songs you can see. What shall I render unto the Lord? What shall I render? All I have to say thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord all i have to say thank you lord why are you angry with god why are you behaving as if god has not dealt fine and well with you i pray that today as you've listened to this message you no longer be the ungrateful generation to be able to open your mouth and appreciate God. Give him thanksgiving for what he has done. And human beings you should appreciate. Tell them thank you. People you should say sorry to. Rise up. Say sorry. Now, stop sitting down. Rise up after this message. Go and approach that person you have offended. Go and apologize. If possible, write a letter. As I'm speaking now, put a test message to the person. Tell the person, I am sorry. Stop arguing. Argument will not attract forgiveness. Argument, no, 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 no. Not even handling a, like a case. Tell him, I am sorry. I own it up. I am responsible. I'm sorry for what I have done. If you are going to do that, you will see that these two simple, marvelous sentences will do you good. It will bring about restoration. It will quench the fire. It will stop war. It will stop grievances. It will heal broken homes. It will settle disputes. Lubricate forgiveness. Fan the embers of love. 
quicken promotion by the grace of God. And when it happens, people will say, what's the secret? How did you reconcile? How did you come together? It came as a result of two simple sentences. I'm sorry and thank you. As you abide with this, you're going to see what the Lord is going to do in your life. Bow your heads in prayer. Let's pray. Bow your heads. In case you've been away, wandering away from God, and you've not said I'm sorry to God, this is an opportunity for you to go back. God has never seen a sinner he cannot forgive. He's willing to forgive you. Open your mouth and say, I'm sorry for my waywardness. I'm sorry for my stubbornness. God, I'm sorry. I am like a prodigal son. I went away. I messed up my time. I messed up my moment. But today, I return to you. Forgive me. The Lord shall forgive you. He will cleanse you. And why have you not said thank you to God? Why have you not appreciated him for what he has done unto you? Why are you stingy with thank you? What is your token of thanksgiving unto God? For the health, for, 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 for oxygen, for protection, for salvation, which he gave to you. This is your day. This is your period. A time when you will release yourself unto him and ask him to come in. Let him give you songs of praise. I want to suggest something right where you're seated right where you're standing you know what i want to suggest right now can you just begin to mention names of god in vernacular give him 20 names 20 names 20 names to god according to his goodness unto you mention the names get into songs sing songs in vernacular appreciate the name of the lord magnify the lord with me exalt his name Fill the whole place with songs of praises unto God. You will never regret it. Precious Lord, I give you the glory and I give you the praise. Restore the spirit of thanksgiving. Lord, this listener has missed forgiveness because of refusal to say I'm sorry. Pride will not let him own up and say I'm sorry. He has offended the institution. He has offended the institution. He has offended husband and wife. But pride will not let him say, I'm sorry. He has offended parents. But pride will not let him say, I'm sorry. I say it turns to you today. Dear Lord, I pray that the spirit of I am sorry will descend upon him or her and that he will add action to his or her decision today and go up to own up and apologize. And I pray that he will have a grace, find favor in the face before the person that is apologizing to. Father, I pray today, give this father the boldness to say I'm sorry to the offended son. Husband to say I'm sorry to the offended wife. Pastor to say I'm sorry to the offended member. Leader to say I'm sorry to the lead that have been offended. The manager to say I'm sorry to the gate man that have been offended. Government to be able to say I'm sorry to the lead. Give us this grace, O God, to the glory of your holy name, that we may live in peace, an environment that will lubricate love. Thank you, Father, for answer prayer. We give you the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for listening. If you go home and practice this, you have a wonderful time in your family and in your institution. God bless you. I remain your brother, Chidi Okorafo. You can call us. You can send your email to us. We're willing to counsel you and pray with you by the grace of God. Thank you. We love you. God bless. Amen.